Collagen is a protein that serves as one of the main building blocks for your bones, skin, hair, muscles, tendons, and ligaments. And even if you do everything right, everyone starts to lose collagen around 25 and definitely in their 30s. In fact, the number one cause of skin aging is the loss of collagen. So the question on collagen supplements becomes the next question to be asking, should I be taking collagen supplements? And if so, what are some of the mistakes that I need to avoid so that they actually work? In this video, we will look at one of the biggest questions about collagen supplements, which is the issue on if the body can absorb them and actually get the collagen all the way from the stomach to the skin, which a lot of YouTubers and experts skip over. And five of the biggest mistakes that you want to avoid if you go ahead with trying collagen. Definitely share this video because I think it will be helpful to others. And without further ado, let's get started. If you guys are new here, this channel is all about helping you make informed decisions as well as being the know when it comes to your health and wellness. And I'd love for you all to gently tap on that like button down below. And if you really like the content, then consider subscribing as well. Now, without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. And I've left timestamps down below too to make finding the information a little easier. One of the biggest doubts that some experts tell you about collagen supplements is the idea that once you ingest collagen, it gets destroyed by stomach acids and are not absorbed in the bloodstream. Therefore, there's no point to take them. But here's the thing. If you investigate what actually happens to the collagen, it gets quite interesting. Since I mean, you do have studies that look at how collagen can restore skin hydration, skin elasticity and density. So what gives, right? Does it reach the skin or not? You see, once you ingest collagen, it doesn't get fully destroyed. They get digested into dye and tripeptides, which survive further hydrolysis actually. And because they survive that, they get to be transported across what's known as the intestinal mucosa via a fancy transporter called PEPT1. Think of that as like your UberX. At this point, the collagen can be referred to as an amino acid mostly made up of hydroxyproline, glycine, and proline. And guess what? Hydroxyproline containing dye and tripeptides have been shown to appear one hour after ingestion of collagen peptides at nanomolar concentrations in the blood. And to be sure of that, they investigated it using radioactively labeled collagen peptides and saw that the absorbed peptides do reach the skin and are retained in the tissue for up to two weeks. Yes, a whole two weeks. But then what? It gets to the skin, I get that, but how does it prevent aging? Well, to understand that, you have to take a look at one of the skin aging's biggest culprits, which are lazy fibroblasts that slow down synthesizing the extracellular matrix of the skin, which is a big component of the skin. And because fibroblasts slow down and get lazy, you have their enemy MMPs, which are matrix metalloproteinases that show up and destroy collagen, fibronectin, and elastin, and even more enzymes. But since we take in more collagen from our collagen peptides, we then promote the growth of those fibroblasts so that they're not lazy and help fibroblast migration so that they can stop being lazy and support the structure of the extracellular matrix and attack those nasty matrix metalloproteinases which are causing all that aging. So now that we know that the collagen reaches the skin and promotes fibroblast activity to fight and reverse skin aging, what are the five mistakes I need to avoid to be successful with collagen? The first is if you're taking or starting to think about taking collagen, you need to control your stress and practice stress management. Stress can cause an increase in hormones like cortisol, which research has found high amounts of cortisol can actually decrease the production of collagen. This is because less collagen is produced in high stress because the body's resources are used to stop the stress instead of maintain collagen. So staying active, connecting with others, laughing more, and yoga, even laughing yoga if you're into that, can lower cortisol. The second is not getting enough vitamin C. 
Vitamin C helps ensure your collagen is functioning at the levels it should be, especially because vitamin C is a cofactor in the synthesis of collagen and elastin, giving you and your skin that plump look that you're searching for. And on that note, whether that is topically or ingested vitamin C, this is going to still stimulate collagen synthesis and act as a potent antioxidant to scavenge any free radicals that are breaking down your collagen. And the 10% L-ascorbic acid by CeraVe is my current favorite one, which you can pick up down below. Or if you want a stronger one, then I'd go with the Paula's Choice C15 Super Booster at 15%, which you can pick up down there as well. The third mistake is not getting enough sleep. When the body is overly fatigued and not fully rested, it compromises the immune system, which in turn slows down collagen production. Seven to eight hours a night is that sweet spot. So make sure you catch your Z's. The fourth mistake is temperature. The temperature you take your collagen is important for it to be effective. Drinking it hot might not be as helpful because collagen powder falls apart at temperatures above the body temperature, which could basically mean you're just consuming gelatin with zero collagen benefits. Instead, you could take it at room temperature or with an iced latte. The fifth mistake is underestimating your sunscreen. You can take all the collagen supplements and collagen stimulants in the world, but if you skip sunscreen, you'd not only waste your money, but you get no real collagen benefits. And one of the biggest sunscreen mistakes is not reapplying it after that two hour mark. And secondly, if you're using spray sunscreen, spray sunscreen can lead to easily missed spots in, the, in which the sun can burn off that collagen, especially those UVA rays, which go much deeper into the dermis of the skin and over time break down the collagen supply. And no, your foundation isn't enough SPF to block UVA. You should still at the minimum wear a hat when you go outside, sunglasses if you can, seek shade and use an SPF of 30 or more. SPF 30 filters 97% of the sun's UVB rays, SPF 50 filters 98%, and SPF 100 filters about 99%. And if you don't want to wait the 30 minutes for the sunscreen to absorb, try physical sunscreen, which works right away since it acts like a shield instead of a sponge. Click the red subscribe button down below if you found any value, and I'll see you on the next one.